This is Sandy Lemke from FreeWebsiteTutorials.com. Today we're going to learn how to create a shadow all the way around a web page using Photoshop's slice tool and HTML coding. What I want to do first is to start by showing you a high level process um, of what we're going to be doing today just so you know ahead of time what I'm going to be showing you in Photoshop. It might make it a little bit easier to understand. This is just a screen print of the Photoshop desktop. The very first thing we're going to do once we get into Photoshop is we're going to create a blank document um, that is the width of your website template. In my case, that's 950 pixels wide. Then we're going to create a second document, which is a little bit smaller than that, and we're going to put a shadow on this second one, and then we're going to drag it into the top one so that we end up with one document that looks like this. It's got the little smaller one in the middle and it's got the shadow on the smaller one. Then what we'll do once we get to this stage is we're going to use the Photoshop slice tool to slice this one image into three separate GIF files. I'm going to show you how to, how to save these separately and then I'm going to take you briefly through some HTML coding that I would use if I were going to pull this shadow onto a web page. So let's move on into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do this. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to create that top box. So I'm going to go File, New. As I mentioned, on the top box, the most important thing to do is to make sure that it is the width of your website template. In my case, that's 950. I also like to make it about 250 to 300 pixels high and I'm going to use white. Now if you're building this and the, the container of your website is some color other than white, then what you want to do is make this first box the same color as your website. For ex explanation purposes, I'm just going to use white. So there's our first box. Our second box is also going to be white. This second one needs to match the content area of your site. In my case, in my example, that's also white. But I'm going to make this about 150 pixels less. So in my case, that's 800 by 100. And now I've got a smaller box. Now what I need to do is I need to put a shadow on this smaller box so that when I drag it up to the top one, it already has the shadow on it. In order to do that, I need to double click here and I need to change this name background to anything other than the word background. And what that's going to do is it's going to free up some functionality for me. So I'm going to say OK and now you'll notice that this says shadow instead of background. You'll also notice that this has become available to me. When it said background, it was not available to me. If I click there, I get a little menu and I'm going to pick Drop Shadow off that menu and I get this nice little layer style box. Drop Shadow is already selected and I've got some variables here. Now, what you want to do, I have found the perfect set of variables to use to create that shadow that you just saw in my example. You can mess around with these and do what you want, but I have found that once you come up with something that works, just use it repeatedly. So in my case, I've got negative 90 here. The distance is 0. The spread is 35 and the size is 35. Now, I didn't mention before that I do have a PF file available, uh, a PDF file, sorry, available on my website that has all of these screen prints that you can print off for free. Uh, have that by your side when you go to do this yourself and you, you know, it'll make it a little bit easier on you. But anyway, the opacity is 75. Most of these settings will already be set for you when you come in. Multiply will probably be up here. Opacity might say 100%. You want that to be 75, negative 90, 0, 35, 35. And then I don't want a dark black shadow. I want a gray shadow. So I have found a certain color that I like, and it is 7B7979. Say OK, and then I've got the shadow that I want. Now you're not going to see it here, but when you drag it, if you grab up here and you drag it onto the larger one, you've got the shadow. Now I'm going to move this into position by hitting the Move tool, and I just want to get it centered by using my arrow keys. That looks about right. Now I've got what I need. I don't really need that other one anymore. This is what I need for the 
slice tool. So what I want to do is I want to grab the slice tool from the toolbar over here and you'll notice that you've got a few variables up here. When you come into this it's probably going to say normal. What you want is fixed size. 950 is this width of this document so I want my first slice to be 950 and if you recall I made the width of this 250. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this into three. The top one's going to be 100, the middle one's going to be 50, and the bottom one's going to be 100. That is going to equal my 250. You need to come up with similar proportions. The reason why I make the top and the bottom bigger than the middle is because you don't want to risk cutting off this top shadow. So I always make that top and bottom bigger than the middle. It just worked out this time that I'm going to make that first slice 100 pixels. You can make it whatever you want. What I found is if you go up into the corner of your document and you click and hold down your mouse and you just slide it, it will automatically create your first slice for you to these exact proportions. Okay, And you'll notice that the second slice is already there for me. It's grayed out though. It's waiting for me to tell it how, what size I want. I'm going to do 50. I'm going to again click, hold down my mouse, slide it a little bit, and it's automatically going to bring that one in. Now my third one is going to be 100. So I'm going to grab again in this corner, move it slightly, it slightly, and it snaps into position. So now I've got three, this one image is, is sliced into three separate smaller images. Now what I have to do is just go File, Save for the Web, and I just I don't have time to go through this whole thing, but I just wanted to show you that when you first come in here, this whatever is in brown is what you're going to be saving. You can save each one of these individually, and that's what you need to do. So you, you would click on the first one, it's brown, then you would go save as a GIF image, and you would save it just like you normally would, and then you would come back in here the second time you click on the middle one, now you're saving the second one and then you would click on the third one and now you're saving the third one. That's how you end up saving three separate GIF images. You need them to be separate GIF images because when you come back into your HTML document you want separate images like this. Here's your top portion of your shadow, here's your middle portion, and here's your bottom portion. You want it to be in that format because here is the HTML coding. Basically, all it is is within your body tag, you'll notice that we've built a table here. And what you're going to do is your body code right here, the body color, I'm sorry, right here is your body color. In my case, this is white. You want that large box that you created in Photoshop to match the color of your body. So in this case it's white and I chose white in Photoshop. If you were choosing another color to match your website you just need to make sure that the body color here matches the color that you did in Photoshop and vice versa. Then you've got a table here, 950 pixels wide in my case. That's the width of my website template. I'm going to create my very first row in my table is actually the image call for the top shadow GIF. Okay? The second one, the second image call, is the middle portion of the shadow, and the third is the bottom portion of the shadow. The top one and the bottom one, the image um, code is identical. The one in the middle you'll notice is different. This background image code right here is how you're going to get this to repeat. So you put your image call in this format in the middle row along with your content. This is your main content area. And what this does is it repeats. It'll automatically repeat that middle portion of the shadow for as long as your web page is. So no matter how long your web page is, the shadow will go all the way around. So that's basically how you do this.